Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 90, getting towards the end of uh, November. In fact, I think this will be the last one in November. Next meeting will be in December because I don't think anybody's going to be around for Turkey Day. Too many Americans running the show here. Sorry about that. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to join us with this time slot right here, right now. Let's go to the agenda. We'll do triage. Uh, there's a few bugs. We'll talk about this potential of a Wix V3.10.2 concept thing again, where it's at, what we're doing there. Um, and then we'll do the usual questions and comments. So, on to triage. Bob, you ready? I am ready. Sweet. All right. Bugs, features, all that good stuff. Down here at the bottom, we still don't have more information. Um... What do we do with this? I mean, he did go through the trouble of creating his own BA, um, to, or an example BA to demonstrate this, but um, should we give this to Jacob to resolve as fixed if he really thinks that's the fix? Since I think I'm right. fine with that, and he's not here to defend himself, so. I think we do that. Let's do that. We'll put it on Jacob. That'll work out great. Exec XML, yes. Hidden target data stuff. Yeah, custom action data is still shown in the thing. And that's unfortunate for these these things. Which means we need to mark hidden target, right? Pretty sure. It's probably the right thing to do, though. Yeah, well, I mean that was the um, that was the uh, feature request, right? Yeah. Provide the parallel version. Yeah, the other one, the parallel versions that allow the one be secure and not secure for debugging purposes. Yeah, or something, or something else, because I I hate the parallel idea. It's yeah, it's a lot of work to maintain. And I'm, I have a feeling we're probably going to have to change the custom actions if we have to do it for the deferred custom actions, too. Right. Um, yeah. All that. Okay. Interesting problem. Um, but I don't I don't think there's any additional thing here. We have the feature request. Yeah. To open up 3X. Should we should so. do that. Yep. It's not breaking except that debugging will be reduced. Right, right. XML, wait, 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 what did that say? As it's done for configure 7, IS7, okay, got it, yep, All right. Apparently unnecessary things. com plus extension file has a list of these defines. Are there actually duplicates in here? Uh, there's at least one. That's not correct? It's it's identical. Oh. It's, it's sorry, it, it's a duplicate within the within the if def block, not duplicate between sixty four and thirty two. How does that compile? If you define the same variable twice, I thought you'd get an error. It's a warning. Oh, it's a warning. Okay. So, okay. So, I guess we can fix this. As long as everything still compiles in the end, right? Yes. All right. No, well, I'm tossing 3x if someone wants to fix it. We can. Fine. Okay, whatever. Uh, next one. Password isn't always hidden. Only arguments this. Oh, if you launch your bundle elevated, which you shouldn't, but if you do, then unelevated, well, you could pass a password through the command line. No, the the problem here... So burn, when it logs the command the line, knows, knows to do hidden properties. Uh-huh. So it parses name equals value. The the bug 
report here is talking about random switches and random command line arguments that aren't name equals value. Oh, it has a dash in front of it. Right. So, so burn thinks it's, oh, it's a switch. All right. That's fine. The BA can parse that switch. Um, it doesn't, other than name equals value, it doesn't know anything about, you know, what could be random switches. I mean, okay, sure, something, an, an argument named password is probably password related, but, you know, obviously it could be any switch or any command line argument. Yeah, well, we can't parse those because we don't know whether it has a following thing or not and all that. So does well, that mean and you... we wouldn't know what, what's a password. Yeah. So there's a feature request here to handle arbitrary, uh, have burn understand arbitrary command line options and then hide them too, which is a whole lot of work. Um, Yeah, I have no idea how you tell Burn that. Well, we have to enhance the manifest and stuff like that. You add oh. it's a feature to go add all this functionality. Um, so yeah, well, I guess we can make it a feature. Toss it over there and toss it three x. The so Phil, the password is hidden if you use the property syntax and you've marked the variable as hidden. It will not get logged burn does do the right thing. However, something dash whatever is not in the property syntax, therefore the command line will get passed through as is. So if you use the uh, property syntax that MSI uses and you mark your variable hidden, the right thing should happen, which is what Sean said he thought he fixed in 310. But this is more, please obfuscate any command line argument using right. some right. syntax which means we we don't have yet, so it's basically. Yeah. Just, I mean, you know, honestly, maybe it's not a bad. It, it's an interesting feature, uh, maybe even more interesting in four. If in burn you listed all the um, command line parameters that you accepted, and then we could throw away things, right? We just throw um, away command line arguments. <coughs> yeah, but I, I don't know that I want to get burn the engine in charge of of understanding and parsing and different command line argument and test specification. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, yeah. here's three, and we could add three more, hell, just from, you know, existing Wix tools. Like, you know, we have this problem of dash, word, colon, word. argument. Yeah. You know, dash, word, space, argument. Yeah. You know. All right, so I guess the answer is, Thank you, but if you want this, do it the right way, aka the way that's supported. The other way. I, I, I lean. I lean toward that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the alternative is that we, you know, let you specify in the manifest whether the command line arguments should be logged at all. Uh, you know, I always err on the side of more data, please, for debug purposes. But you could argue that. There should be a way to turn that off. I am not making that argument, but someone might. Nah, let's go with the syntax. If that's what they want to hide them, they can list them and hide them. So, all right. So the answer is the syntax is what the MSI used. Sorry. And don't use dashes kind of thing for passwords, which means that people with their old syntaxes may get broken. Like, will not be able to come forward. Which I guess would then lead to your feature of, yeah, just turn it all off, and then they can do whatever they want to do again. So do you want to leave open a feature in 4 to yeah, we can, we arbitrary? Can add, yeah, we, yeah, let's close this one and say, if you want to open a feature against 4 to allow hide everything, we would consider that, and then we'll just go. And if he's not willing to open that, then we'll just let it go. Okay. Need to install the Wix toolset twice. When installing the Wix toolset on Windows XP, the installer needs to be run twice as it fails the first time. Fails the first time, works the second time? Unfortunately, the log here seems to be only the failure case. So 
it's not clear to me what is uh, what partially changes. cached package. But that's found. That found. <laughs> Yeah, so they have the MSI, but not the... Oh, no. What do they have? What do they have partially cached? Weird. Would, would it get file not found if the if the right directory existed in the cache, but the I file guess. itself didn't? I guess. If some, it created the directory. Oh, okay, maybe it created the directory in some attempt. And it couldn't clean up somehow. I yeah. guess. Well, that would make sense if the elevated engine crashed. I can see that, yeah. What's the burn version? This is 3.1 through 10.1, so that's good. Right. And it's SP3 of Windows XP. I don't know. They need to attach the debugger to that and see if it works. Kind of surprised that we work at all in XP, but sure. All right, well, yeah, it looks like a bug that should get fixed at some point. Someone should look at it. Put it in 3X until someone wants to look at it. Yeah, that works. I mean, yeah. It's interesting that it works a second time. I don't know why it's different about the second time than the first time. Right. I don't see anything in the log file, because this is basically saying that for whatever reason the elevator process went away. Yeah, that, so that's... After yeah. something's going. So yeah, the pipe is closed, probably. Yeah, I thought there was... You, typically, there's a different error that we get when uh. the elevator process goes away. But then again, that is the elevator process on your typical semi-modern UAC-based OSs, so I'm yep. not sure exactly what yep. that means on XP. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. All right, cool. Needs to be, something needs to be done. XML is improperly changing escape values and attributes. This is a nice bug report, thank you. Changes all attributes in the target so that the escape values are replaced with their unescaped equivalents. Oh, we touched the whole file. Pro yeah, that's XML doc for you. We have to rewrite you. the whole file, right? That's XML doc for you. Yeah, I guess it doesn't surprise me that it would do something dumb like that. It's like, here, let me expand these things for you. not exactly sure if there's a way of even opening it so you don't expand them. Yeah, I believe this is a bug. That would not surprise me. That did that. I'm not exactly sure how you fix it, but... I don't know how you yeah. fix it. Got me. I mean, I guess it, it... I find it a little weird that it would process the entities rather than, I mean, would, does it also like, you know, process, you know, ampersand quotes and all those? Uh-huh. But then you're going to write it write back. Them, but it has to write those back. Here, it's, it's interpreted them and then it's writing them back correctly. Tab, 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 new line, character turn new line. makes doesn't surprise me that XML doc does that <coughs> not exactly sure how to fix it but yeah maybe there's some way of I haven't looked at XML doc in, or XML doc uh, MSXML there's some way of telling it to um, I DOM document whatever I XML DOM document. There's some way of loading it. Tell it, please don't expand all of the entities. But something like that's going to be necessary, probably. So yeah, seems like a good bug to take in three. Someone wants to track that thing down. Do work. 
Got it. All right, I agree. Reacts reasonable? Huh? Yeah, I don't... Oh, ooh. Yeah, if it's an ad. Yeah, but if it's an ad, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Uh, Just try... I I don't anticipate many people are going to, you know, rely on the current behavior. Um, No, seems kind of odd, right, that... Here, I'm going to give you this thing with all this... Um, Perfectly legal it. markup. Please yeah. remove the legal markup. Exactly. Um, load doesn't have much in it. Uh, maybe on save? I'm pretty sure it's gone by the time you download. Yeah. But, yep. No, cheapers. I haven't looked at this API in so long. Yeah, it doesn't look good for save either. All right. I poked a little bit. I don't know if that's going to be a very easy thing to fix. We may need a different XML parser. <laughs> oh, that's all. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you very much, Visual Studio. Or... Window MSSDK, who's that? SQL? I don't know. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, interesting bug. Should someone want to try to tackle that one? <coughs> All right, those will go away. Cool. So, on to something not as much exciting, but somewhat the same. Uh, Wix 3102, this concept that we might do a 3102 because of a security issue that was reported. So, um, Fire Giant, we have understood the issue, we understand it quite well. We have a fix verified, and we are communicating with MSRC on how to go about disclosure. The challenge, of course, being that with this fix, it kind of points out the vulnerability, and if MSRC wants us wants to have anything to do with it, they probably need to do something before we disclose exactly how it works to be responsible security disclosure type things. So anyway, we're going to give them a little bit more time talking about you know, what's going on there. But we do want to get this fix out to people as quickly as possible and still be responsible citizens of the security community or whatever commu- programming community. I don't know if we're part of the security community. But <laughs> this week we are. Yeah, this week we are. Something, is happen- something will happen here. It's like a good period of our time. Um, and we're not alone. We've, in talking to Microsoft, we've pointed out a few other people. And they are now running around trying to figure out what they want to do about their fixes too because they have the same problem that we do. So, um, we were the bearers of bad news for this. But we'll have a fix out shortly. Uh, fortunately, the reason that this isn't people aren't running around with their hair caught on fire, unlike us at the beginning, is that there's no remote execution, and apparently that has made people a lot less afraid of it. The fact that you have to get something on your machine first to be able to exploit this means that they're like, well, if you already got software on your machine that you don't trust, then that kind of lowers the severity of this because, you know, this is just one of many things you probably could do with the machine. Anyway, we're still going to fix it because we still want to remove all chances of security problems, but we're waiting on how to go about doing that with them and make sure that they do the right things too. So that will be happening in the not too distant future. I I doubt we leave 2015 without a 3.10.2 released. I think we can say that pretty safely. Other things, stuff going on, questions, comments, cool things might be happening out there. It's awfully quiet. We don't have John. He's not around to say yes, no, plus one, minus one, whatever. All right, quiet. It's all good. I think we'll declare this meeting a success. Um, Thank you for joining us as always. Uh, and we won't be around next week because that will be hopefully all the people here enjoying their holidays, not working at all, and things like that. Of course, I'll be working because, you know, what's well, a startup if you don't work holidays a little bit? Um, and uh, then we'll be right back in it in December. Until then, you guys have a wonderful holidays, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>